All right, gonna go ahead and get started now. We've got some super impatient people. Mike Tatum and Thomas are all very eager to learn a little bit about abstract. So I much appreciate the enthusiasm. Um, so we've got 213 people on this one. Um, the chat is going off a little bit. I'm gonna definitely say hi to Tim Van Dam for Michael. Uh, he might be joining this one as well. Um, in the background, I've also got uh, Allison, who just joined our team on the social media side. Uh, she came over from Dribbble about a month ago, and uh, she's going to be taking care of the Q&A section while I go through the webinar here. Um, just to recap what we're going to talk about, um, design developer handoff, talking about things like inspect, collections, review requests, a little bit on our roadmap, um, how to make things accessible for the folks that we're collaborating with how to service the designs that we're putting so much effort into and care so much about. So if everybody can hear me all right, and there's no issues, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in because it's now 9.05. All right, sounds perfect, everybody can hear me. If you haven't joined a webinar before, my name is Alden Spence, I'm a design advocate here at Abstract. Um, what that means is I work between the product team and our customers, a lot of enterprise teams, Shout out to Spotify for providing the music today, um, as well as being great to work with. But mostly what I do is workshop around workflow process, education, running sessions for folks, as well as putting together some self-service content like this. So um, we are hiring for design advocates. Subtle, not so subtle plug there. Um, if you do have questions during this webinar, there is a Q&A section. That's where we're actually going to be addressing any questions, marking them as answered live, or Allison's going to be working in the background to um, promptly address replies. I'm also going to take a look at this at the end of the session, I'm going to budget a bit of time um, for questions at the end, just to make sure that everything is covered. Um, with the number of people in here, there might be some that I don't or I'm not able to get to. Uh, so we'll send a video follow up as well as follow up to the Q&A as well. All right, so talk a little bit about the basics before we get into this, what the handoff process and workflow looks like with an abstract. For this session, definitely operating under the assumption that folks here are comfortable with Git, as well as affecting change in abstract. So things like master, things like branches, these shouldn't be foreign terms to us. Um, hopefully folks have a pretty good understanding so far of how to work in abstract, or at least how to affect change and manage our sketch files. So, what does this look like when we start incorporating other folks, engineering, developers, PMs, whatever it is. Um, typically those folks are viewers with an abstract. There's a couple different ways that we can, you know, surface our work to them. Um, first process, and this is really what it looks like from the designer side of things, is creating a branch, committing some work back to that branch. At that point, it's a great idea to create and share collections, as well as request reviews, um, especially from those developers that we're going to be working with that might be implementing the product or you need to grab assets, inspect things. Um, through those collections and through that review process, we're able to spec out anything that's put into abstract directly from a sketch file. As a designer, I don't need to do anything to make the work in the box and artboards and designs and screens that I'm building. Uh, don't need to do anything to make those inspectable. Uh, I can surface these to my developers and our counterparts for free. Um, those folks don't need to pay for a seat with an abstract to have access to inspect, files, grab assets at all. So we're not creating some sort of political uh, budget power struggle within the organization. Um, so basic overview, touching on some of the things that I'm gonna make sure to dive into today. One more sip of coffee before I move on to the slides. All right, bit of an agenda, um, layer detail, collecting feedbacks, reviews, inspecting assets. Um, Layer detail, really what we're gonna talk about is how to view work with an abstract, how we're going to comment, leave annotations, 
compare current and previous versions as well as inspect work. Where you can find that in the product uh, is how to access it. Collecting feedback, I'm gonna go into a little bit more on creating collections, how to share those things out, um, how to generate links, things like that, what you need to do to make sure people have access, reviews, adding folks to a review request process, um, making sure that they have a clear understanding, a bit of context in the summary, they have the ability to approve and request changes, very similar to a pull request. Um, and last thing, inspecting assets. Very excited that we you know, uh, were able to roll out assets within Abstract 78. Um, that's been very exciting for us, but we have a long way to go with a lot of the things that we're building in this area, and I'm excited to share a bit more about the roadmap at that point. All right, so also, if you have questions, make sure to drop them into the Q&A section so I can be sure to create a solid list, grab that after the, after the webinar, make sure that we covered everything, and if not, follow up on it. So let's jump into the layer detail. Um, when reviewing work with an abstract, we have a sketch file with an abstract, whether we're on the Mac or the web app. Any artboard or item floating outside of an artboard is rendered as an individual preview. Um, by accessing that preview or clicking into it, there are three main tabs that are available to us. Comment, compare, and inspect. Comment is going to contain, on the left-hand side, every change, every commit that we've ever made to um, this artboard specifically. That history is tied to the artboard. Um, so if we are leaving feedback on that artboard, our comments and annotations are tied to the artboard at the point in time of that commit. So um, what that looks like, you can see on the top here in the screenshot, we have a bit of a blog header for our recent launch of dark mode. On the left-hand side, there's a couple different commits for playing with different colors and a first pass, simplifying some things. The feedback that we leave on this artboard is gonna be tied to the artboard at that point in time. On the right-hand side, you can see that we've got some feedback that's been left. Um, we're going to preserve that feedback over time. Really important if I'm viewing work to have that previous conversation accessible, immediately available in context with what it's related to. Very easy to leave comments, very quick. You just need a viewer seat at least. Um, right now, we don't have public linking, but I'm gonna talk a little bit that on the roadmap as well. So. Compare any of these artboards, whether we're leaving feedback on them or we're iterating over the course of a couple different versions, we can compare the artboards side by side and we can also overlay it in this view. So when I compare an artboard, I have two different versions of it. Right now, today, an abstract. What we're going to be comparing is the version of the artboard that we're viewing as well as the previous version. Nothing more than that right now. Being able to overlay this, I think is Super important when we're trying to point out small details. Maybe it looks like not much has changed um, or the changes are a little bit indistinguishable, so we're a little bit confused. We can diff actual layer changes made to this artboard and inspect, but to kind of just point out quick visual updates or changes, um, I can overlay these two artboards and just get a quick um, comparison of what shifted or what has changed. Um, pretty much just like inverting them, laying them over the top of each other. Uh, so compare, really good for kind of pointing out the small details. Comes in super handy when folks are trying to compare copy updates as well. Um, maybe we have some UX writers creating child branches off of our own, contributing their writing and copy. Maybe it's legal stuff, whatever it is. Um, merging that up into our branch and making sure that we have a good understanding of specifically what's changed you need to be accompanied for, accommodated for. All right, and then the last tab, inspect. This is really what most people on this webinar are probably here for today. Um, tons of different things we can do, um, as well as, you know, service to other folks. Um, as a designer, I'm not creating PDFs with red lines. Um, I'm not taking apart my artboard and making sure to spec everything out. On the left-hand side of inspect, what you're going to see is the entire layer tree of that artboard or of that item. Everything nested within it, deltas for everything that has changed from the previous commit. Um, really, this is just to help us understand the structure. We can explore this structure of the artboard on the left-hand side. If we really want to drill into specific components, see what symbols they're using, see what the grouping structure is, whatever, to better understand it. Um, but it's also, you know, totally okay to just explore on the artboard, further click into symbols, layers. On the right-hand side, we've got our properties panel. I don't need to do anything to make this available. This is always available for anything, any file that we ever put into abstract. We're going to surface the layer tree as well as all the properties associated with it. We'll go to properties a little bit more in the last section in terms of what's available, how things appear. 
what we surface from abstract, as well as a lot of updates that we have coming towards this. So collecting feedback, we have some work within abstract. Um, how do we direct the right folks to be able to focus in on what they're doing uh, or what they need access to? Maybe we've been working on a branch for a while and there's a ton of files that have changed, a ton of artboards that have changed. And because abstract errors on the side of surfacing more changes than less, including non-visual changes, what's been removed, what's been renamed, whenever the data of that individual component or artboard is affected, we're going to let you know about it. Um, if we've been working on a branch for a couple months, sometimes it looks like a lot of changes on the files view or in the commits tab. Um, so it's really important that we start to get in the habit of driving focus through collections. Collections are really a way to group the contents of our sketch artboards um, <clears throat> to either share and collect feedback or provide focus for our peers, um, either as part of review or to link out to folks. What I'm presenting from today is a collection. Um, these are all artboards that are parts of a sketch file that I put together. Um, what we're able to do with these artboards is not only you know, share them out as a group, um, walk through them, present a flow, share them a design critique, uh, but I can also comment and annotate on these artboards to call out specific areas of the design. At mention people use Markdown to stylize our feedback or even embed um, images into our content as well. Links, images, block quotes, whatever we need to do. Um, another really important piece about collections is they also serve as a gateway to inspect. This is where it starts to come into a bit of the handoff side of things. So we're not just talking about collecting feedback, um, we're talking about sharing a set of artboards or sharing the content of our sketch file so that a developer can come in here, um, access the artboard and, and actually inspect it to be able to pull, pull value out of it, pull assets out of it, measurements, specifications, et cetera, without even needing sketch. Um, being able to do that from the abstract Mac or the web app, very important for accessibility, um, as well as inspect is something that you can do offline if you're syncing projects. Um, and yeah, collections come into uh, a huge piece of this, but um, definitely best practice seeing folks creating collections for either driving focus in the review process, which we'll talk about in a moment, but really to drive focus for the work that's being done on the branch. What do we need people to focus in on and pay attention to when there's a ton of noise and a ton of changes happening? Um, yeah. Uh, also, last thing I'll mention, really important that collections can update automatically. So if I have a collection here, it's not just PNGs that I'm looking at, it's not just static images. Um, when I'm actually creating this collection and pulling in my artboards from Sketch um, or whatever content is pulling from the Sketch file. As a designer, I have the ability to allow these artboards to auto-update. Uh, this just means that every time I make a commit, every time I affect change to the artboards that are part of this collection, um, my collection is going to update automatically. I don't need to spend a bunch of time rebuilding a deck over and over and over in Keynote or PowerPoint or whatever, um, just to be able to share out my work and know that every Thursday when I go into a brand design review or a product design review, that collection is going to be available. Um, and it's going to be up to date with the latest version of those artboards. So um, collections are huge for not just sharing work, but providing a portal to any of these uh, individual layers to be able to spec them out, um, get measurements, and provide you know four or five screens, however many there are, to share with folks, to be able to provide value from them. So I'm gonna jump back in here. Comments and annotations, pretty straightforward. We're either leaving those in the collection, which will pull them into the layer of this artboard uh, or the commit of this artboard at a point in time. Left-hand side again, commit history, every change we've ever made to this artboard, every version of it. Right-hand side, all feedback that's ever been left on this artboard tracked over time. Um, that's how we're preserving decision-making. Um, that's how we're preserving the conversation that's happened and evolved and tying it not to a PDF or a keynote or whatever it is, we're tying it directly to the file. <laughs> I think that uh, can't be understated. Uh, it's really important for how we preserve decision-making and set up and really start to build a system of record for design. So collections, Whenever we make, you know, if I were to leave this annotation on here and say, um, I've looked at collections, maybe this is a little bit inceptive because I'm talking about collections while presenting from a collection in abstract, talking about abstract, 
But um, you know, this feedback is tied to the artboard now. If I go back to the history of it, it's gonna be tied to that commit. So comments annotations, very straightforward. App mentions markdown. As far as sharing goes with an abstract, uh, there's a couple things that are important. Right now, when we share work with an abstract, folks need to be a part of our organization. Um, the organization is really our account. It's what contains all of our users, um, all of our files, all of our version control, all of our projects, branches, whatever. To be able to share things to folks that are outside of our organization, we can grab them the link, send that out to them, but they'll still need to be uh, a part of the organization and have either a contributor or a viewer seat. To reiterate, viewer seats are free, name and email to sign up. To kind of just quickly show um, where we can access that, if I'm a contributor in Abstract, I can go to the People tab, Invite Folks, and Invite Folks as a viewer. I can get this link, send it to my devs and PMs, and they'll be able to access the public projects with an Abstract, as well as receive links for me. So if I'm dropping that link to a collection inside of Jira Ticket or a GitHub issue or whatever it is, they'll be able to have quick access, not just to the content and the conversation, but also to inspect those files. So really important, we make sure to invite the people that we collaborate with in Abstract to Abstract before sending them a bunch of links. Um, that's gonna cause them to just request access and the admins are gonna get emails, um, <clears throat> which at scale gets annoying for sure. So we wanna make sure to copy that link, send it to folks, make sure they have access to Abstract, in the future, just to touch on roadmap, uh, we are working on some things around public share links, not requiring those folks to have an account, but you know, being able to increase the permissions around what we're sharing to folks outside of the organization to surface collections, the versions of an artboard, inspect without needing to uh, sign in under a name and email. All right, so let me just dive back into my collection here with my healthy branch summary and review request approved. Okay, so once we have um, a collection created and we have uh, maybe shared that out with a couple of folks on our team, provided a healthy branch summary to provide context for folks, we have the opportunity to request a review from our peers. Um, whether this is developers or product managers or even just design peers on our team that we need to service our work for, um, it's a huge point of, of abstract and really something that um, the level of accountability under what's approved, who approved it and when, as well as you know, indicating what's appropriate to merge to master. Very important feature. One thing to keep in mind is that reviews don't prevent a branch from merging today. Um, enterprise feature that we've been talking about, but reviews right now are a best practice. Um, being able to lock that down on project is definitely a need that we hear surface quite a bit. So. Uh, in the future, that's something that we're considering on an enterprise plan. Um, when we have been working on a branch, uh, we need to request a review. We don't need to need to, but definitely recommended. Teams that I see adopting this, um, it really increases the level of transparency around providing access to PMs, devs, stakeholders, whatever it is, as well as accountability. Um, making sure that we have a review process, which is really similar to any other peer review process or pull request and get even um, allows us to create a record of when these things were approved, by who, and for what reason. Reviewers have context that they're able to leave in the field when they approve a request changes to a branch, as well as they receive notifications. So if I'm being added as a reviewer, I'm gonna get notified with an abstract, I'm gonna be brought to the branch overview with the summary and a collection, um, and be able to leave my feedback accordingly uh, at the time when it's appropriate. So when we're thinking about who we wanna add, I feel like I've been talking about this a little bit so far, some folks might have a bit of a hint, um, but definitely a good idea to add anybody that's working on this with us. Um, when we are looking for approval, um, typically in design review, we're looking for approval from our peers or, or that direction, but when we're able to involve the other folks and the stakeholders that are actually going to be implementing this into the product or um, need to be able to have that Actual, actionable feedback that's tracked across versions of what we're building um, to be able to accommodate for what's possible and what is likely to actually end up in build. Um, really good idea to involve PMs, stakeholders, to be added as reviewers. Teams that I see adopting this have a super healthy process. 
designers creating a branch, committing their work, adding a collection and a summary in, devs, PMs, UX writers, whatever it is, are being added as reviewers, getting a notification, being brought to the branch overview. From there, they have context on what the scope of the work is, what the tickets are, what the research is, if it's linked and any is associated with this. Um, and then they have the ability to approve and request changes. So first step in the top right, when we have a branch, request a review. From there, we're able to add a couple folks within our organization, viewers or contributors, doesn't matter. They can review from the Mac of the web app and either approve or request changes to this branch. So see, branch summary, very important here. Um, teams that I don't see providing a branch summary are really missing an opportunity to provide context for their team during a review process. So instead of requesting a review and having people be brought to a ton of changes in the files tab and having to navigate the files themselves, be a good uh, collaborator and provide them with a little bit of focus um, and a little bit of scope for the type of feedback you're looking for, as well as the context of what this branch is addressing. Requesting a review, very quick, we're gonna automatically change the status to be in review. Once we're added to review, actually, I'm just gonna jump out of here really quick. There is a reviews tab um, on the home page of Abstract here. This is where I can actually manage the reviews within my organization. Organization level on the Mac or the web app, reviews on the left-hand side, what's assigned to you and all reviews within the organization. So I have a really good high level understanding of what branches are getting to ready to merge within the Mac application. Who's approved them, who's been added to review them, what the context is within the branch summary, what the collection is, how far along the review is, what the status of it is, et cetera. So hugely important to be able to, you know, surface these things from a high level um, and actually be able to manage and have that overview of the work being done, where it's at, what's getting ready to be approved by our peers and be merged into our source of truth. So I don't see a ton of people taking advantage of this on their own. Um, definitely something I would like to start seeing more, which is why I'm surfacing in this webinar, but super important, we can filter by project, um, just to be able to see you know, where things are at, what's assigned to us, kind of manage the work that we're doing in abstract as a stakeholder or collaborator directly from this panel, what's assigned to us. All right, let me jump in here to my branch. Okay, so once we've requested a review, uh, we can actually allow those stakeholders to approve and request changes to the review. There's gonna be a drop down on the top right. It's gonna say review. They're gonna be brought to that branch overview on the Mac of the web app. Another reason that it's important, we leave that branch summary there so that the folks reviewing this have an idea of what they're supposed to be paying attention to, what the context is, the collection for the screens they're supposed to be paying attention to, or we would like to surface to them. It's really just going to save us both time, um, as well as communication and going back and forth of like, where is that uh, artboard that I need? Um, Abstract does a great job of defining a source of truth defining what the latest is. Um, however, when there's a lot of work being done on a branch, we really wanna cut through that, dry focus with the collection and a branch summary. All right, so when we actually leave a review, we have the option to approve or request changes. This is really talking about the branch overview. Any specific adjustments to individual layers or components, um, we're gonna enter through the collection, leave our comments and annotations accordingly. But when we're talking about the overview of a branch, we really want to leave next steps. Um, we really want to leave a bit of feedback for what we need to do to make this branch uh, acceptable to merge up to the source of truth. Uh, if there's any, you know, I mentioned some markdown or documentation we need to provide, definitely leave that in the review request field. So once our folks have approved uh, a branch, we're able to merge it into master, or at least for most teams, that's the appropriate point for merging into master. back out of comments here, get into inspect and assets. All right, inspect and abstract, something we rolled out about a quarter and a half ago maybe. Um, like I mentioned earlier, as a designer, I'm working on my file through abstract, creating a branch, committing my work. If my files are in abstract, 
I mean, regardless really if I'm working on them or not, inspect is available. Um, I don't need to do anything to be able to open this up. Um, I do need to make sure that the people who I'd like to have access to it are part of the organization. But other than that, I'm not taking the file, moving it anywhere, updating it over and over and over and over. Every time I have a change that I need to surface, um, I'm not exporting the file, importing it elsewhere, and just shifting around, you know, um, all the iOS v3 final.sketch and tossing that into another product. Anything within abstract you can inspect. This is really um, something that I think is when it's, you know, tied directly to the version control, tied directly to the feedback, tied directly to what the source of truth is, as well as, you know, what we're able to define and share with our folks, really helps centralize um, the feedback that's being left and we're providing value from. So with an abstract properties panel, if we're looking at the artboard, um, it's going to give us a high level overview of the typefaces that we're using, the colors that we're using, text, CSS, well, styling code that we can use in CSS or React Native. Um, we're going to be able to add, you know, tons of things here in terms of um, the assets that we're making available and exporting. And we will talk a little bit about how to define and actually export those things in a second. But um, assets, typography, colors, properties, anything that we're exploring, um, text strings, whatever it is, one click, click, click to copy, one click, click to copy. Um, so whatever we're exploring on the artboard, we're able to control there. We also have the ability to highlight change values. So in the bottom right, I can toggle this on and off to actually be able to diff and explore in the layer tree, specifically what component and layer of that file changed. Um, right now, we're still working through some things like this. Like it might be a non-visual change, like an update to the style that's being used or a way that it's handled or a way that it's structured. Um, but we're gonna recognize more changes than others. Um, but hopefully this is something helpful at least when we're trying to dig in and say like, what specific piece of this artboard has been affected between the current and previous commit? That's gonna be helpful there. Um, also really important, um, <clears throat> also really important to know, uh, not just any compare view, but be able to also see what has been added as opposed to just change. So new components and new symbols that are a piece of this artboard as well. All right, let's get into assets a bit. I have some things that I'm working on um, and I need to be able to make the assets and deliverables available to my peers. Um, I'm still going to define these things in Sketch. Uh, any parameters that I need, iOS, web, Android, whatever, exports, 1X, 2X, anything that Sketch can export, um, we're going to define that in the file. We're going to commit that to abstract. At that point, We'll have the opportunity to generate assets for the file. Um, you don't need to keep doing this, you only need to do it once. So once I've committed some assets to abstract, um, I'm able to generate those uh, assets within there for the file and be able to export them out of abstracts Mac or web app. Pretty straightforward. We don't do any sort of export parameters within abstract. We still do it in the file right now, um, which I think is Currently the same as is Zeppelin still need to define something as exportable or at least, you know, clicking generate asset. Um, so whatever we need to provide to folks, uh, we're going to define that in the file. Abstract is going to bring that in, distribute it to the Mac of the web app for free. All right, generate assets. We've been working on some artboards, we've been working on some screens, whether it's individual components or pieces nested within an artboard, whatever we've made exportable and whatever those parameters are. Um, as you can see, you know, uh, we want to generate assets for this file. It's gonna be available in inspect. When we're working on our branch, this is gonna generate assets not just for this layer or for this artboard, but like it says, the entirety of the file. So, uh, in the background, looks like my speaker's changed. I'm just gonna double check. Maybe. If I turn my headphones off and I turn them back on again. All right. Can you hear me? All right, can folks hear me? A little bit of an echo? All right, cool. All good, my headphones cut out for a second for some reason. Dang, that chat just 
<laughs> went a little bit crazy, but thank you all for letting me know. I really appreciate it. Um, so when we're generating assets and abstract, um, we really want to make sure to do this as, as a designer, uh, instead of putting this on the developer, um, we're committing our assets to abstract, just generate them, click it once. Uh, that's all you need to do from there. Developers will be able to grab assets from the Mac or the web app, as well as, you know, directly alongside inspect measuring things, selecting individual components, the distance between one and the other, whatever the dimensions are, individual assets. So once we've generated those assets, they'll appear under the assets tab in the right hand side of the properties panel. Um, whatever the parameters are, all the ones that we've defined, um, I can download these all in bulk for this layer. If I've defined, you know, 15 or 20 different assets for this artboard, um, I can click download all, or I can click, you know, one at a time um, and pull out individual pieces of it. So pretty similar between the Mac and the web app, no differences here. Um, don't need to have a native Mac app or sketch to be able to inspect artboards or download assets or, uh, you know, be able to see the styles and properties being used. When I say styles, I mean textiles. One thing that's different um, between abstract and other inspect tools is we're pulling the properties directly from the data within sketch. Uh, we're not changing the name of them. So if I'm using, um, you know, a black color, for example, which is my wallpaper and my background and my deck and what I'm wearing, um, or I'm not going to be able to say, you know, abstract black right now. I'm going to get the hex value for that or the RGB value for that. Um, where we're headed with this, obviously being able to define individual components of styles and naming them appropriately so that if I'm a developer, I don't need to double check the hex code to the value in the code base that I'm applying um, and making sure that we don't need to keep double checking that. But um, right now what abstract is going to provide is the specific values that are being used in that artboard that we're looking at or exploring. Um, when I'm looking at <clears throat> inspection from the artboard view and I'm seeing all these different typography styles and all these different color styles, the way that we're ordering those is actually by most frequently used. Um, so in this situation where on this artboard, I'm using a couple different typefaces. One thing here that is super important is for using textiles is for us internally, um, our textiles actually reflect um, the naming conventions that our engineers are using. That helps surface things in one way. If I click on one of these individual pieces, we'll be able to surface the textile that's being used. So uh, this is just letting me know the level of frequency um, that these typefaces are appearing with. Also super valuable and important to say like, all right, on this overview, why the heck, why the heck are we using uh, this typeface one time and for what reason? Um, it really helps a ton in terms of hygiene uh, and just realize like what is actually being pulled in the file. Really common when I see folks starting to use abstract for the first time is realizing uh, the variations in terms of what they're creating, whether it's in type or libraries that are being used. Um, super important as well as, you know, helps us maintain consistency uh, and reduce the redundancy of one-off one -off type styles that we're using. So um, if I'm looking at this artboard, I might be wondering, you know, SFUID display bold, we're using it once. Uh, why? And is that appropriate? Um, all right. So we've got about 23 minutes left and about 47 questions in the Q&A. Um, that's a lot of questions to get through. I think this is most of what I wanted to cover here. Um, but just before I do, I'm just gonna walk with like three minutes through the product, to show folks what a healthy review looks like, where to find things. So let's get out of the deck for just a second. Um, and don't worry, I'm versions and versions ahead. So let's make this full screen. I hope everybody appreciates that my background matches my webinar as well. So. Um, all right, so I'm with an abstract, whether it's the Mac or the web app, whether I came here via an email. Um, I have a couple projects here. I have my favorite projects. If I'm consistently working out of a couple, this is just reducing the noise, especially at scale. I'm not working out of these things. I don't need to see them and I don't need to sync them. What matters to me is on my favorites tab. So in the Mac application, um, we have a lot of branches open right now. Some of these are open for feedback. Some of these are ready for review. If I'm being brought to a review and added in here as Jonathan Snook, 
the man, the myth, the legend, amazing quality person, uh, and good seeing you, Jonathan, at Team Week. But Jonathan's brought to this branch that Tim is building. He has a summary providing context around what notes still need to be done, what's accountable, um, a bit of a summary for the scope of the work, uh, as well as a collection provided. So Jonathan lands on this page. Uh, he's able to get a really good sense of high level overview, what he needs to pay attention to. When we go into a collection, whether this is something that's been shared with us or it's something that um, we're seeing for the first time as we're added as a reviewer, grab a link in the top right to share this out with other folks with an abstract, under presentation mode, access inspect directly through here, oh. freeze up, go right through here. Don't worry, I'm on a couple releases ahead, so I get to find everything. But um, comment, any feedback that's being left, we just open up the left hand nav. On the left hand side, every change we've ever committed to this artboard um, when blue passed AA accessibility, but not AAA. Um, when we are testing out some asset stuff for export, if I need to compare these things and overlay them, no visual change there. Maybe if I go back to a couple here, compare some more noticeable changes, I might get an overlay. Nah, nothing there on this artboard specifically. So if I need to actually inspect, this is actually a really super inceptive artboard to pick on my side, um, but left-hand side here, deltas for specifically what has changed. Um, whether it is a visual or non-visual change. This preview rectangle here has been adjusted. The backgrounds, we changed the styles here. Um, we reset the fill or something, so it's been marked as a change. Letting me know that's exactly why this has been marked with the delta. So whether or not I'm exploring on the left-hand side here in the actual layer tree that's pulling directly from the sketch file as the designer built it out, or I'm selecting individual components and specking out distances between the two, one click, click to copy, text lines, copy a set of styles here, grab the properties, the hex value, the colors that are being used, or if I want to you know, see this artboard from a high level, all the colors that are being used sorted in their order of frequency, um, or mark something as exportable, assets will be available there. Also have access to a little bit of a sneak peek. Sneak peek preview. I was gonna talk about this at the end here, but probably good I mentioned it now. Being able to specify uh, locally what your preferences are for measurement units. Whether it's pixels, points, you don't have a preference, or density dependent pixels, what you'd like to be able to pull color values out of this in, X, ARGB, or RGB. Um, that's gonna be really cool. Still something we have internally working through in beta, but um, very important to be able to set those parameters, thinking about some things around grids and guidelines and making sure that the view states um, we are working out of are to our liking and preference. So, um, and last thing, again, reviews tab on the overview, really good for making sure that we have a high level understanding of what's in review. If I'm working out of a project consistently, branch overview is great for that. But when we're creating a ton of branches for exploration, the things that not, might not be important to us or might just not need to, to really surface, being able to filter those things by project, see the reviews that are assigned to you, be able to access them for the Mac or web app, get value out of them as a developer. Last thing I'll touch on, SDK. I think that this is something really important to mention for the folks that are joining this or interested in um, design development handoff, but sdk.goabstract.com. Um, I believe we're still saying that this is in beta, but we've opened it up um, to the public and we're able to have API and CLI access to pull out layers, build some automation, maybe notifications for developers. Maybe I need to pull previews in or toss something into an iframe to be able to access it for inspecting an artboard from directly within JIRA or GitHub. Um, or being able to open that up for, for comments and things like that. So abstract SDK, sdk.goabstract.com. Check that out. Feel free to play around with it, see if you can build some really cool things out of it. Our goal as a product is to open up the value of design to the organization. Um, 
we don't want to build a vertically integrated walled garden that locks everybody in and doesn't play nice with others. We've seen that trend over the last couple of years with a lot of different tools. It's pretty much the opposite of our influence coming from uh, open source background with our founders. So um, really putting some effort into making sure what is, you know, accessible through the SDK is of value to folks. Uh, and if you want to play around with things, um, maybe you want to start trying to toss something into an iframe to be able to open it up and inspect it and embed that actually. So grab assets from, from, from there and open it up in the web app. Um, whatever it is, feel free to play around with it. SDK.goabstract.com. Really excited to see what people start to um, start to create. We've seen some really cool things so far. So if you have anything cool that you want to talk about or surface to us, reach out. Uh, we're happy to promote it, happy to share it, happy to use it as a reference and, and service the good work that people are doing. So that kind of brings me to the end of my 45 minute uh, run through here. So why don't I go ahead and jump into some questions while I pull up some ways to contact us uh, and reach out. Actually, gotta make sure I can grab the questions. One second, cool. 61 open questions. I am kind of intimidated by that, a little bit doubting that I'm able to get through them all. Um, so I'm gonna make sure to follow up with as many as I can or don't get to immediately after the webinar, but I'm gonna start at the very top here. Some of these might've already been addressed. Um, anonymous attendee asks, is there a way to keep annotations present when the master file is updated? Right now the annotation goes away and is archived to an older version of an artboard but the annotations don't carry over to the new updated artboard. Feedback and annotations, comments, they're all tied directly to that artboard. Um, they're tied directly to that commit, actually, if we want to get more specific. So we don't have a way to kind of like sticky feedback um, to an artboard. Any comments and feedback or annotations will be surfaced on that artboard in the right-hand side. If I delete that artboard or I remove it, that comment kind of goes with it right now. Um, we're thinking about some ways to kind of provide textual notes to specific artboards that say sticky at the top or be able to pin things. Um, so great question, something that's definitely on our mind. Uh, and I would kind of like stay tuned in the future for, for updates on that area without spoiling anything. Also, anonymous attendee asks, are you planning in the future to make viewers paid for seats? No, <laughs> not what we're about. Um, be able to surface these things that we're building and abstract to folks that need it without creating political power struggles over budget. Sounds like a better idea. Um, Amy Travis, what's up, Amy? Good to hear from you. Um, good seeing you and chatting with you in Texas. Um, definitely want to know whether simple names show up and inspect would be super helpful. Like I mentioned, um, simple names will show up. Uh, any sort of like defined styles or overrides um, will not be you know, editable with an abstract, I'm not going to be able to say like, oh, in abstract, I want to call this component something because it references the token or whatever ID that people are referencing code. Um, right now, we're going to show you specifically what that symbol is named in Sketch, um, as opposed to like the uh, defined uh, naming convention that we want. Um, something we're working on in the future, obviously, that I mentioned. So I agree, that will be super helpful. I think right now that's a uh, difference between abstracts and spec and Zeppelin transparently, but if we're able to check 90% of the boxes um, and keep working towards them without setting up a paywall, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Thanks for surfacing that though, Amy, appreciate it. Janik Dalal asks, all the WYSI process before doing these webinars, do you practice runs? Do you make a rough outline? Um, I've been doing this for almost a year and a half now and I don't practice too much, but I try and have a good framework as well as uh, a structure that I'd like to cover, materials that I want to get through, things I want to make sure to touch on. Uh, but good question, I guess. Uh, Amy also asks, best way to tell my reviewers that I want them to review. A NOSA dialogue for picking a reviewer doesn't let you give a comment. Totally agree on the feature request there, Amy. Um, right now when we request a review, um, we're really just sending folks a notification that they've been added as a reviewer to a branch. When they click into there, they're brought to 
the branch overview, which provides branch summary, as well as a collection for context. Um, if we need to, you know, further at mention them or further provide context, the branch summary or the activity feed on that branch would actually be, you know, a great place to take advantage of. So just to kind of show you where that exists, I've added Dana as a reviewer. I can add Morgan as a reviewer as well. Um, Morgan will now get a notification when I've added her as a reviewer. She'll be brought to this branch overview here. If there's any additional context that I'd like for Morgan to have, you know, hey, oh, Morgan, we toss some emojis in here. Um, cool. Um, any additional context, whatever I need to let Morgan know, whether it's links to things or just a secondary notification saying like, hey, can you please review this or I need to review here. Um, I can drop that into the activity section. Morgan will get a notification. Um, she'll be able to, you know, have a little bit of an extra prompt. All right. AF asks, is there a way to assign an export setting to an artboard and sketch without having to commit it so it becomes available in abstract? So just to talk a little bit about how commits work with abstract. Really, they're taking the change data of the sketch file, bringing that to our servers, our version servers. Um, that's the point where we're able to say like, hey, there's some things that have been marked exportable. What are they defined as? What are the parameters? What are they? Um, and be able to generate assets from there. So in Sketch, working on our branch, we define our export settings, whatever we need, commit them to abstract, we're able to have them. We can't do that directly from within abstract today, asterisk, asterisk. So uh, something we're thinking about. Thanks for the question, AF. All right, I'm just gonna pull up the, I hope this is, uh, I hope this is value for people. I'm gonna start kind of trying to jump through as many of these as possible. Um, and it looks like the chat is still going crazy. All right, and we have about like 10 minutes left. I'll probably stay like an extra five minutes just to make sure that I can get through as many of these questions as possible. Um, so, Clint Flores, thanks for asking the question, Clint. I have things placed outside of artboards. Tell me, organize and title artboards or groupings of artboards so that if another designer comes along and opens the sketch file, they'll know what, it is, what is what. Um, those are pulled into abstract as visual elements to be viewed or reviewed. How can I remove them? So they're not actually visual assets to be viewed by my cross-functional partners or even designers. All right, so let's say that I, I'm just gonna open up this in the background. Um, what I would look into, Clint, is creating slices, um, adding those into collections and being able to define your exports from there. Um, I see this a lot where people are using Sketch as like a whiteboard, um, or we have a bunch of context floating around the actual work and we have things that are arrows pointing to other things and flows, um, whatever it is. Um, so let's say that I have a set of artboards here. Um, maybe I want to, you know, grab a couple of these different things, you know, um, create a slice out of this, make an export from it. With an abstract, this is going to surface the entirety of the slice. So if I want an artboard to appear in abstract with context, we're still gonna surface the artboards individually and the components individually, but we will also be provided with this nice slice grouping of our artboards, multiples of them, and things surrounding them. I actually see people using this as a really nice way to cheat like a page view, if that makes sense. So um, one thing to think about, Clint, and uh, feel free to let me know how it goes for you. All right. Russell Bishop says, making every symbol screen exportable seems to be the only way for developers to use it as an asset. Just a limitation of sketch. Um, whatever I select can make exportable. Um, whether it's selecting everything in the layer tree, I think that's a totally fine approach, but right now uh, we're trying to be a little bit focused with how many assets we're actually generating. Um, we don't want folks to say like, here's 500 artboard file and we generate all assets in one commit. Probably gonna take us a little bit of while to do. So. Um, we want to make things exportable with intent um, on the design side to be able to surface those things. Good question, Russell. All right. 
Chelsea asks, after the handoff, is there a reasonable way to use abstract? Compare development to designs for QC purposes. Yeah, I mean, um, we can always compare what's been merged and what's been on the branch um, to what's been built, either through, you know, maybe we added the collection into a JIRA ticket. Um, the collection is preserved, whether or not we merge that branch. Um, we're able to continuously reference, you know, the assets that have been approved by design and compare those to what actually went into development. There's not like an overlay feature or a pop out, for example, right now, but definitely something that we're looking into for quality control purposes. Uh, good question, Chelsea. All right. Um, Amy Travis asks, do com comments on screens and collections show up in inspect mode? Comments on screens show up in the comment mode, the collection view, but not inspect right now. So commenting directly through inspect on individual symbols or components, another thing that we're exploring. We've got a big roadmap. We've got a lot of work to do, but luckily we have a big team now and just raised another round and got a lot of runway. Um, so it's pretty cool. So hopefully we can get to some of those things sooner rather than later. Man, this questions list is not going down. We've got 63 questions. I thought I started at 60. Um, Clint Flores asks, where, is that where collections can come in where you can select what elements you want viewed by folks? That is where collections come in. We create a collection to drive focus for our branch, for reviewers, for stakeholders, engineers, and PMs. All right. Melissa Isker asks, how does inspecting assets work for support to the various resolution sizes a developer might need. We're just going to define those resolution sizes in Sketch, commit them to abstract, we'll generate all those assets, they'll have availability to 1x, 2x, 3x, uh, directly through the Mac or the web app in abstract. All right, follow-up question, what happens to collections when a branch is merged to master? A couple things today. Branches can be, branches can be two things. Um, they can be active or they can be archived. When we merge a branch to master, we archive the branch along with the collection tied to it. If we have that link embedded anywhere in a ticket or whatever, we can still access that collection. It still lives there. It's just living in the archive with the branch. Um, in the future, you may notice that I have something a little bit different on my left hand map. I have a collections tab. We're bringing collections to the project level, um, extending the lifetime of them and the longevity of them. So, if I need to have an overview of specific flows or really high level of the product and what exists on master, whatever it is, we'll be able to create collections from the work of multiple branches, um, as well as be able to service those things so they don't go into the archive uh, when we merge our branch in, extending the lifetime of collections and ultimately the value of them. Um, great question, Melissa. So keep tuned for project level collections. That's going to be awesome. And it already is for me. And I'm sorry if I'm making people jealous, but uh, excited to share it with you all. So, and I just saw Brian dropped into the chat. You can make a collection directly from master. You can have auto update on, set up collections on your master that will always contain the latest versions of those artboards. Chris James asks, if I share a link to an auto updated collection, am I sharing a link to the current version or will the link always point to the latest auto-updated version? I'm sharing a link to a collection. This is important to, to decide though. Auto-update happens on the individual artboard or layer level. So auto-update isn't something that's like, the entire collection is auto-updating or not. It happens on every piece of the collection. So if I'm sharing a link to a collection and those components or assets or whatever are part of the collection, are auto updating. Whenever we access that link, we're going to be seeing the latest version of those artboards, layers, whatever. If those artboards, layers have auto updating turned off, we're creating a snapshot in that point in time to be referenced. Um, and we can have a mix of those things as well. So good question, Chris, uh, and happy to provide some more clarity around that. All right. Anonymous attendee, uh, previews cannot be displayed. And inspect collections. Is there suggestions as to what we might do? Best practices to avoid that this not, does not happen. So, if a preview cannot be displayed uh, and it doesn't say layer removed, um, preview generation is happening online. So, 
I would check on the Mac of the web app. Uh, I mean, if it's happening, previews can't be displayed on the Mac app. Check in the web app, see if it's showing up appropriately. Um, if anything, you know, command R refreshes my abstract Mac application. That'll trigger a generation of previews as well. So a couple things to try there, but thanks for surfacing. All right, Michael Neparath. When linking to an artboard, is it possible to make the link always direct to the latest version of the design rather than a specific commit? It is if it's part of a collection, if it's an individual layer. Um, right now, we're sharing this artboard at this commit. In the future, we'll be able to see a couple different things, whether or not people can access all versions, which would essentially mean they have access to the latest as well. So although they would be brought to this layer, there would be a button down here saying go to latest. Public share links, sneak preview for the folks that have hung in there uh, the full hour here. So thanks for asking that question, Michael. Much appreciated. Dang, it is 10 o'clock. For those of you that have to hop off, thank you for coming. Like, really appreciate the time, uh, the questions. I've got a lot of them to work through and they keep coming in. Um, I'm gonna hang out for like another five minutes and try and get through a handful more. I'm gonna mix it up and actually just go to the bottom. Um, but, if you have any questions or things that you want to see or get on these webinars or specific topics in the future, or maybe you're building amazing stuff with the SDK and want to share it with us, let me know. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we're going to have the recording of this webinar available. We're going to email it to you, and I'm going to also add it to Vimeo. So if you need access to the recording, you want to share things with your team, and you want to say, like, hey, why aren't we using branch summaries, or why aren't we using collections, or why don't we just use inspect because it's already available and we have access to it without a paywall. Um, go ahead, grab the recording from Vimeo. We're going to send an email follow up. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for joining. And also big thanks to Allison for triaging some of the Q and A as it's come up. You're definitely going to see Allison around on our social, running our Twitter on spectrum, interacting with each and every one of you. So um, I'm going to hang out for like another five minutes and just try and work through a couple more questions. Really appreciate it, everybody that's able to, uh, to stay on, um, as well as the ones for joining. So hopefully this is valuable. Feedback, always open to it, let me know. I'll slow down the pace at which I'm talking, I promise, as we run a couple more of these webinars. Um, all right, back into the Q&A. Brian asks, our team is five months into the starter plan. Is there a way to upgrade to business for the remaining months, paid for a year initially? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if there's a sales rep associated with you, Brian, but um, those folks would, you know, I'm sure be totally open to upgrading the remaining plan uh, for the accountable months that you have left um, on the year. So feel free to reach out. Um, I think if you actually like email support or just hit us up, we're going to put you in contact with the right person. All right. So Mark White asks, how do collections work inside branches? When you create a collection in a branch and merge the branch, does a collection get added to master or does it disappear? It disappears right now. It goes in, well, I shouldn't say disappears. It goes somewhere. It goes into the branch archive with all of our archived branches. So this is all of our branch archive. Some of these have been merged. Any collections that I had, are still on that branch. The link still works if we toss it into a ticket. Um, so they don't disappear. They do go somewhere, um, but that somewhere isn't the most accessible point, which is why project level collections. All right, I'm gonna jump to the bottom of the Q&A and start working my way up now. I don't know if I'm gonna make any more progress doing things that way or not, but uh, Sean Hester asks, is it possible to view the grid overlays from Sketch? Not right now. We're gonna be able to do some cool things there in the future in terms of like, what grids are serviceable, um, being able to actually have some grid settings with an abstract. So no secrets uh, spoiling that. Um, so we're gonna have some grids and some cool measurement things. Um, all right, Sean asks, is it possible to export link variables for things like color? Um, exporting color, anything that's like not a visible layer, I should say, like if it's a component in the sketch and it's part of the layer and we can make it exportable, we can export it. That's probably like the answer I can get without getting too much into the weeds there. 
Um, Becca asks, can you link assets and styles from a different branch master and see them in these collections? When we have project level collections, uh, we'll be able to pull in layers, artboards, whatever from Sketch into a single collection. Uh, so effectively, we'll be able to create a collection from the work happening in parallel on multiple branches. That's going to be cool. Thanks for the question, Becca. Um, Melissa asks, you suggested using slices for quick access to view with annotations in Sketch. For view to views with annotations in Sketch. This is great. Is a way for object to ignore items outside of an artboard unless it's a slice? Um, not right now. We're going to bring everything in. If it's not part of an artboard, we're going to recognize it as an individual component. Uh, what we pull into abstract, everything that's in the sketch file. We're not hiding certain aspects of the file. Um, so right now, that's going to live alongside you know, the other contents that are in, independent of each other. Um, so creating a slice, really just going to give us a hack for like a page view or artboard with context. We're still going to have the other stuff. Um, but yeah, good question, Melissa. Something to think about. Um, Jeff asks, Illustrator support. I saw it on the roadmap. Any update there? You can actually sign up for access to if you go, oh, cool. My keyboard is not doing what I thought it was going to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say abstract.com. Maybe Allison actually has the link to the early access sign up. But anyway, yeah, I can send it. Yeah, if you want to drop it in the chat real quick, that'd be sweet. But we're taking early access signups for Illustrator and XD support. Um, likely that XD will come first, but those are our plans right now. XD and Illustrator support along with Sketch. We want to be file type agnostic. We don't want to build a vertically integrated walled garden that keeps everybody else out. <clears throat> we want to be a central hub for designers, stakeholders to collaborate on whatever tools they want to use. Um, that's our goal. Good question, Jeff. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, Alina Cohn asks, can export settings for library-based symbols pass through, pass through to client sketch file so we don't have to re-specify export settings on our common system icons? No, we have to do it in the individual file. So the question, I believe if I'm understanding this right, is like, if we're distributing library symbols and we define those symbols, can those nested symbols being used have predefined export settings that carry through into abstract automatically? Not right now, something to think about. Totally understand the need there. Um, but right now, we're defining things on a screen by screen basis, really. Um, so, definitely a couple of areas for improvement. And that's a really good piece of feedback, Alina. Appreciate it. All right. So, Allison just dropped a link into the chat. It is right here. We have XD and Illustrator support coming. Um, that's super exciting. Uh, we're not going to send you a bunch of junk, but we are going to let you know when we have something to test. Um, so feel free to sign up. Let us know what you're interested in. Um, let us know what you would like to find value out of this. Feel free to give us a shout out. It's going to be interesting when we start to have more file formats in the mix. It's a huge step for us. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. Adobe Illustrator and XD support coming to abstract soonish. Okay, cool. So I think that's all the time that I've got in me for today. Um, I'm going to try and get through the remaining 53 questions today and hopefully send those in like some sort of follow-up email or at least um, truncate them into something we can send out that's digestible for folks. I'm out of breath. I'm going to close the webinar but really appreciate everybody for joining. And thank you so much um, for helping us do these amazing things. We wouldn't be doing them without you. So uh, hopefully see you soon on another webinar soon. Gonna keep making these. Let me know if you got topics that you wanna see um, and enjoy the rest of your week. Be well, bye.